everybody, and welcome into another week of Buccaneer Insider. We are back, and we've got another oh, different episode this week. And not so sports centric, but uh, definitely still in the realm. It was a lot of fun. Killian McClatchy, Nicholas Case, we're back another week, another week closer to getting hopefully back to school, back on campus, and getting everything back going again. But this week, we got some uh, real good guests. We've got Dr. Nicholas Holland, who uh, is in charge of the pet band, and really, you know, he's a, he's a key force or a key hand there in with the band and everything they do. So it was fun ch- chatting with him. And then uh, our partner in crime, Mr. John Peters, he does a lot of the play-by-play over the course of the years. And uh, yeah, it was, it was fun getting to chat with them. It was, it's always good seeing familiar faces whole lot of energy from both of those people, which is great. Um, both two people very grateful to come on and, and chat and talk. And it's not that people haven't been, but sometimes it's a little, a little coaxing into conversation with these guys. Kind of got to guide them. Not with these two. They were happy to talk and, and happy to share, and we were so happy to have them. Yeah, no, it really was. It was, it was a lot of fun. Got to, got, to, got to learn a couple things. I know at least myself learned a few things here and there but uh yeah definitely when you get dr holland and john peters there's gonna be no short of energy there lots of discussion lots of talking john i don't think we actually asked a question i think he kind of took over and just kind of went from there um and dr holland uh he got deep into band stuff which is awesome because i i was pulling out words i forgot that i that i even knew when it came to it so it was awesome it was great well, as I was gonna say, there's not much music. There's not much music in my body, but uh, I definitely I learned some things, and uh, it was a great conversation. He's the one who's gonna be leading off, uh, Dr. Nicholas Holland. But before that, can't forget our sponsors, East Bay Deli. Thank you to them for helping us put this together each and every week. Uh, we we've been very thankful for them sticking by our side, and looking forward to continuing on as well. Absolutely, thank you, East Bay Deli. You've been great. Food is great, and uh, you being a sponsor up in the corner over there has been wonderful. East Bay Deli, proud sponsor, Buccaneer Insider. Let's get going. Dr. Nicholas Holland, he's coming right at you. I want to welcome in our first guest for this week. We've got the director for the bands, band director, the man that makes the music, or at least is in charge of it all, Dr. Nicholas Holland. And pleasure having you on. It's great to see you. I know we get to spend a a lot of time around each other, especially during the basketball season. So how have you been? What have you been up to? Oh, I've been staying busy. I'm on uh, several committees to get us back on campus this fall with the uh, pandemic task force. And uh, obviously all the the band activities for planning over the summer. So I haven't really, um, haven't stopped by any means. I've slowed down a little bit, obviously in March and April, but uh, we've we've been uh, still still pretty busy at it since then getting everything ready for what we what we plan to be uh, an in-person experience for the fall let me first stop i start by saying it's nice to have another nick on the show Um, uh, what was it going back to march i think you guys might have been possibly involved in going to the women's basketball tournament before that got shut down um you guys i think we're coming back from it actually what was what was it like on your end going through the, the big shutdown well, it was surreal. Uh, I mean, for everyone, we we've, we've never been in an, in an extended shutdown like that. Uh, I mean, we've had uh, hurricanes for different uh, different ones of those that blew through, but nothing for an extended period of time. So it it to um, it, it was the the pivot of all pivots uh, on campus in general. Um, some of the IT folks and I kind of chuckled that we we learned how to be an online university in the span of about two weeks where it, uh, we, we did more in those two weeks than we had done in the past six years so it was um, you know when you're forced to do something you figure out how to do it and that's that's where I still am I'm still figuring out ways to to make this happen safely and and still uh, making it make it that buccaneer experience for everybody so when all that happens, what's kind of your, your plan going, going forward? You know, obviously with everybody in the band, you know, it's a lot of, you know, compact, everybody's right in there trying to get everything done together. So do you have any plans going forward, at least, uh, you know, in your head right now? Absolutely. I've got kind of three sort of working scenarios and I'm waiting for uh, folks that are way up more, more important than I am to make some determinations. Uh, but if we're a green light for football, like we hope to be, uh, from the conference, we're we're ready to resume 
I, I, I call them normal activities, but they're certainly normal with an asterisk. We, uh, we have to be socially distant now. So all of our halftime show, our pregame uh, routines, the things that we do on field, they'll be at, uh, at, at, a, at a spacing greater than six feet, actually. Um, and we're, we're ready to do that. We do that a lot in, in some instances anyway. So that'll be a norm for us. We'll be wearing masks when we're not playing instruments. Um, and that will be different, but we'll make it work. Um, when we, when we're, our out, we, we're normally outside anyway. So uh, it's safer to rehearse outdoors because UV light kills the bug faster than anything. So it's, hey, good for us. We'll be outside like we normally are. Uh, it changes the way we would do some indoor uh, small group rehearsals and sectionals and things like that. But um, the marching band proper will will be outside like we like we would normally be. Um, so distancing, masks, um, outdoors. Um, we have to kind of adjust our rehearsal schedule a bit because normally I'll we'll be inside for the heat of the day for music rehearsals. Uh, so we won't we won't be able to do the indoor thing quite like we we hope or want to, but that's okay. We'll we'll kind of shift some things and take advantage of some cooler temperatures at night uh, while we've got daylight. Um, and that's really about it. I mean, we uh, I've been on involved in uh, a, not involved but following very closely a few research studies that have given us some good suggestions, some considerations how to stay safe, how to. Uh, what are the types of things we need to be doing and not doing, and and uh, so we're we're kind of folding all of those best practices into what we're going to do and and make it work. Um, biggest impacts for us. I mean, some of my greatest questions right now are, what's the fan capacity going to be in in Buccaneer Stadium, and if if it's going to be reduced, what does that do to us? And obviously, we've got some some sort of fallbacks for that. If I have to split the band in half and we take turns during quarters or halves or whatever, hey, we'll make it work. So uh, even, uh, here's kind of a radical, crazy announcement, but even if we don't have football this year, uh, we're still gonna have marching band because it's a curricular uh, piece of, uh, of the degree program for music education majors. So we still have to do something uh, with that ensemble. And so we'll, we'll still be at it and still, still try to do our thing, even though we might not necessarily have a, a football game to to showcase those those efforts but yeah my 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 general philosophy is is here it's we got to figure out how to live with it rather than kind of curl up in a ball and hope it goes away because i don't think it is we just gotta we gotta figure it out and take care of ourselves but let's uh let's get busy and, and do instead of just uh fret if that makes any sense you kind of took uh the answer to my next question but um many years ago different lifetime ago i played trumpet for a brief spell and i know those yeah. are some of the instruments that you have to give thought to because they will propel things a little bit differently. And that's kind of where that's, that extra spacing comes into play. Yeah, straight bell instruments are more problematic than, than other ones. And so trumpet, uh, trombone, even the clarinet uh, in some of the early research that just came out was kicking out more aerosols than, um, than most of its counterparts. So it's, it's, we'll be having, we'll have little bell covers on the ends of each of our instruments. Um, so we'll kind of mitigate those aerosol transmission things too. Um, if we could ever get a definitive answer from science, is this airborne or aerosol transmitted, then we would have maybe a bit more uh, teeth to attack it. But, you know, we're, we're kind of planning for all cases and all scenarios, and then we'll see which one of, uh, as we progress with, with more research, with more science and more best practices, some of the other, some of the scenarios will begin to fall away so that we'll have a, a path to, to follow. So one of the, you know, when you mentioned kind of how everything went online, how did you handle that? Because, I mean, obviously a band isn't really a band if it's just one person, you know, sitting there at your own house. So how did you guys do that? Did you guys kind of say, okay, we're going to take a little bit of a break? Or did you still still try and try and keep up some some sense of the, the normalcy a little bit, at least at the start? Well, it's it's I have kind of a twofold answer uh, because we have the athletic bands that are that are, that service the the sport groups, mm -hmm. and then we have our concert ensembles and our concert. All of our groups took a break, but it was right at the time where the athletic band season would have been wrapping up anyway, and so that uh, in a from a timeliness that would that worked out well for the pet band because we were basically. 
for our, we have two concert ensembles. Dr. Marshall Forrester is the director of bands and he conducts the wind ensemble. And I am uh, the associate director and I conduct the symphonic band in the spring. And so we, we kind of took a, an extended break. I mean, we, we had spring break as it came by and then we took maybe another break to kind of really get our feet under us and figure out how we're gonna pull this off. We spent a lot of time Zooming just face to face without any sort of instrument making. We, we learned pretty quickly that a Zoom uh, meeting like this is, is great for connecting with each other and for just FaceTime, but not, not for music making in sync or in real time. There was too much delay between various uh, speeds and connections. So uh, we ended up doing lots of, uh, we ended up doing some different things. Um, the stuff that, that we were able to pull off for commencement was kind of a, of a multi-layer process. We used a, a, an app called Soundtrap where um, students would play along with a click track in their, in their earphones and they would play through their parts and then they would send in sound files and then we would do in a separate uh, instance, get as many folks in a Zoom call as we could and uh, use some higher processing units so that we could have like, I think 49 folks on a screen. Um, and then we <laughs> did some picture in picture work and ended up getting the entire group on the screen but that was actually not live audio. We then took the audio files that they sent in, we synced them up, mixed them together, kind of added a little bit of reverb to it, and then dubbed the audio on top of those uh, video zooms. Same thing with what the uh, choirs did for the commencement stuff. So those were, those were quite produced in terms of uh, how we made them work from a, from a good quality sound concept and a, and a live video thing. So it was a bit, uh, a bit smoke and mirrors, but still, it was all those kids making all those sounds, so we were happy with that. Yeah, yeah. I, really, I really wondered how you do that, because we've done enough of these to know that one person to the next, the connection is not great yeah. or it's fantastic. It's, it's hard to get a, a right. correct thing, so uh, the way you pr pulled it up was really impressive, and then to hear the behind the scenes is even more impressive. And it, honestly, it, it, it wasn't, I, I say this too, too often probably, but it wasn't rocket science. It was... Um, or brain surgery. It was just kind of finding out the ways and getting the tools and making them happen. It wasn't, wasn't terribly difficult. A little time consuming more than anything, uh, just because the uh, digital editing process is tedious sometimes. But yeah, it works out really well. We were pretty happy with it. The, um, the funniest one was when they, uh, the folks, the commencement folks asked for the marching band playing the national anthem. Um, and so that one was, uh, that, that was literally just a Let's search back over the season, and maybe uh, that one ended up being from uh, not this past fall, but the fall before last, because it was the best sort of musically sounding environment, and the band was almost identical, so I felt okay about it. But literally, that was just video recording from the top of the press box during pregame one, one game. So it worked out. So what goes into, uh, I know one of the things that I'm absolutely amazed by, by everybody in the band, especially the marching band, is just the fact that they can remember everything, especially, you know, the whole performance that, and that is incredible to me. So what goes in for you, what goes into to making those routines and, and what's kind of the, the process about, you know, in, installing it and getting everything up to, you know, the quality that we would see on a Saturday on the football field. Yeah, that's, that's the process is probably my favorite part. Maybe that, that initial design process uh, and then the end result, the actual great performance, but, the design process for us, and it's fairly typical of other schools, but for us, we typically have the show concept in place or determined in May. At that point, we spend May and then some of June, hopefully, uh, tracking down arrangements. Either we find things we really like or we, we uh, contract those out um, so that we are, so that the group will sound the best. Uh, then we take the, uh, the actual musical arrangements and then start mapping out what I call flows for um, phrases or kind of sequences of movement. So we start with the music, we design the movement to follow that so that it, the actual drills that we do are intended to complement and enhance what the music does. Um, some folks will start with the drill first and then kind of make the music sort of work to its, its um, strengths. But for me, it always starts with and ends with the music. The drill is only to support that. Um, in, in our best uh, flows, we have our music written and our drill done usually by this time of year, by mid-July. 
Um, and then we see students come uh, early August, about a week before classes start. We have our sort of preseason camp where we kind of unify marching fundamentals. We teach the music, um, not just the things that are done in halftime and in pregame, but also uh, all the stands tunes, everything that we expect to play for the entire year, we work on it. Uh, we don't necessarily memorize all of the music, um, especially the stands tunes, but uh, the performance uh, pieces on field, we try to memorize just because it's easier and it's less equipment and less things to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm always amazed at students that, um, that can remember lots of sequences like that. Now, a college marching band, normal college marching bands don't move nearly as much or as often as a competitive high school band. Um, so we're doing maybe a third or certainly at most half of the same of the number of movements that a competition band's going to do. Um, but even then, it's still a lot to remember. And, and um, the, the process for us is just like any anybody trying to learn anything. It's a lot of repetition, a lot of successful and positive repetition and reinforcement. Um, we do a lot of uh, visual work, a lot of mental work. As we are working on learning music and memorizing music, we're also uh, marking in the, our music parts what the movements are like that as far as how many counts, uh, what it, where's, where am I facing, which, what's, what's important, what's my role here. We spend a lot of time on, on those types of details, and I think it's through all of that that allows the whole thing to come together. Um, and it's, it, it's one of my favorite sort of group dynamic things with any group of people. If you get enough folks that know what they're doing the majority of the time, then for the moments of time where folks don't quite remember, they see enough folks remembering and it, and it snaps in and it, and it kind of clicks right away. Mm -hmm. um, I think of one of my favorite videos, I was watching a, like a morning show of an elementary school choir singing a song. And they sang it beautifully. And then they would go back through and have each of the students try to sing some of it by themselves. And they couldn't do it. They would lose their place or forget the words or mess up the notes or whatever. Um, so that's, that's one of my favorite group dynamics about any uh, group of people that are really locked in and have a good synergy and are, are working toward a goal. But it, to me, it manifests itself uh, it, just perfectly in a marching ensemble. That was me. I'd hit the chorus then. Yeah. The rest. Yeah. 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 Oranges, oranges, oranges. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you mentioned high school marching bands. There are some talented ones around here. Do you ever go scout them out? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we are regularly, both Dr. Farster and I are regularly visiting uh, high school marching band practices, their concert band practices. We, uh, we, we try to be as visual and as present in their band rooms as possible because we want their kids. Absolutely. I mean, um, you probably everybody down here hears about the Wando Band, and they are one of the finest bands in the country. We have other bands here in the Low Country that are that are on their level that just don't quite get the same amount of notoriety. The, the Somerville Band is is pushing at Wando's heels every year for state titles. Um, the Fort Dorchester, the Stratford Band, uh, Goose Creek has got some great things. Hanahan Berkeley. Uh, they're, man, there's some great bands around here. We get uh, and we get great kids from all of them, and, and even the ones that don't that don't do the the contemporary marching scene. We get some great kids from North Charleston, from Timberland, from Stahl. Um, it's yeah, we get them all, and we're, we we love all of them. As a Ford grad, it makes me happy to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, we have not many Ford D kids in the past, but we're starting to get some more. And some of my section leaders are Ford D kids, so it's. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm not the most notable alum, but I'll see what I can do. Okay. Put in a word. Yeah. A uh, little bit uh, more of kind of a fun one. Not, not, not to pick any favorites within the band itself, but what, what's your favorite instrument? What do you like? Oh, wow. That's, that's a good one. I'm a, I'm a percussionist by, by trade and training, so I would probably go to that uh, group, that section. Um, when I marched, um, high school, college, marching band, and drum corps. I marched the uh, multi-tenors. Um, they are very heavy, but also a lot of fun. So that's probably my favorite one, the one I'm, I'm maybe a little bit more sensitive to on the field, because um, I know how, how heavy they are, but I'm also pretty particular <laughs> about how to play them. Um, I, if I went back and did it again, I might be a, a French horn player, because it's such a fantastic and versatile instrument. Um, the only one I'm not great at is probably flute. 
Um, I've just never been super into flute, so I rely on, on flute professionals a lot. You see, you know, when you think of bands, you think of horns, woodwinds, percussion, those traditional things. Is it hard to work in like a non-traditional thing, like a bass guitar like you guys have or things like that? Uh, some, some yes and some no. Honestly, it depends on the player. It depends on our arrangers. Uh, I've been really blessed and fortunate to have guys that can play by ear as well as read music. So once they kind of get a, a feel for the tune, uh, then they have my permission to sort of ad lib a bit or kind of like just just play around with it a little bit. I don't I don't try to make kind of the exotic instruments like that stick to the page because that can be a little square um, to be frank. But uh, yeah, it's we um, we seldom have bass guitar parts, so we'll we just write those in. We have them doing some different things. We um, I've included a couple summers ago we or falls ago we included a cello. Um, for various reasons. We had a really talented cello player and uh, I wanted to do something different. So we literally had her play one of the tunes, I think, on cello. Um, and it's, it just takes a little planning. It takes uh, some, some forethought and being sure we utilize the instrument really well in that moment and in that space and, and to amplify it properly so that it can be heard. But yeah, I like to do a lot of singing. I like to do uh, uh, exotic or not common band instruments for sure. Um, and we, of course, do a lot of uh, footwork and, and some choreography, too. Uh, another fun one for you. Out of, you know, there's so much music just in this world. So if you could, if you could get the chance to sit down and have lunch and just chat with, with any, you know, like a musician, a composer, a band, just who would it be off the top of your head? Who would you want to sit down and spend a couple hours with? Wow. That's tricky. You can even give us a couple. If you've got a couple that are like popping off at the top, you know, you can give us a few. Well, let me, let me keep the band hat on for a bit. I would say um, I, there are some band composers that I would love to just hang out with and, and absorb. Uh, Brian Balmages is one of them. He's kind of the new uh, hot up and coming ones. Eric Whitaker, another one who does a lot of, he's done some wind band work and also a lot of choral work. Uh, he, he'd be a fun one to just sit around and soak up. I love to go to various uh, festivals and, and things like that where I don't have a, a, a group there or I don't have any other ties. I'm literally just a, an interested person and I love to sit in the, in the pews or in the uh, audience and just listen to them rehearse because there's, there's so many great things uh, that, that we can do with music. Um, but as far as band composers, it'd probably be one of those two for sure. Um, and that's, gosh, I mean, there, that's no offense to anybody else that watches this and think, wait, what about me? Because, oh man, I would love, and there are other conductors I like hanging out with just to watch them rehearse because I learn something every time I'm, I'm watching other people rehearse, um, for sure. If, if it's just like my people I'd like to hang out with and learn how to make music with, would be more Caribbean artists. There's a steel drummer named Andy Norell that is just it just blows me away the way that he processes things and the way that he makes music. Um, I've been in a few workshops with him and I, they never get old. I'd love to do that. John Williams is a frequent viewer of Buccaneer Insider. He's going to be very upset that you didn't mention. Ah, uh, yeah. My apologies. Uh, uh, kind of along those same lines from concertos to, to pop, some of your favorite songs, anything along those lines. Wow. I'm a big Beethoven fan. Um, so a lot of his uh, later kind of mid and uh, middle period and later stuff are some of my favorite sort of classical and early romantic works. Um, a big Wagner fan as much of the world was because he was, he had this impact that literally just revolutionized everything. If I had to pick a favorite when a favorite orchestral or classical uh, art music composer, it would be Aaron Copeland. His music just resonates with me. Uh, and I really don't have a reason why, it just does. So I, I gravitate to his music a lot. Um, but that's just on the, the art music side. I like a lot of the avant-garde percussion stuff. I like uh, Steve Reich and, uh, man, um, some, even some George Crumb, and he's way out on the limb there. Um, <clears throat> contemporary stuff, I, 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 don't, I don't listen to much sort of top 40 or R&B type things, but, if I do, uh, it's honestly, I really get a kick out of Christian rap. Just that kind of gets me, gets me pumped. I love Lecrae and NF a lot. 
A lot of that before football games, so you're just used to hearing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know most of the tunes that are going on up there, so it's yeah. My kids pick on me a lot. They 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 say I'm just not normal. So I think that's that to me. There's a trophy. I hang on to that proudly. Um, well, I don't know, Nick. Do you have anything else for him? No, I think this was great, though. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the band and what we do. We we love being a part of the game day experience. We uh, we we take great pride uh, in it um, because we and I preach to them a lot that we have a lot of influence on how our guys do and girls do, and then how we can get in the heads of the of the opposing teams a bit. So and we work really hard to to make it an environment that we're proud of, that we're excited about, and that ultimately that we we win with because. Winning is more fun. So, uh, but I, I really do appreciate the, the opportunity to come in and talk about our kiddos because we're pretty proud of them. I can also tell you, after seven years of working at CSU, the next time I hear it, I will never be so happy to hear, I'm so glad I go to CSU. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We might well, be a little quicker than normal because we're so excited. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a ton, Dr. Holland. We really appreciate you coming on. And, you know, it was, it was a fun chat and it was great seeing you and look forward to hopefully seeing you again real soon. Absolutely. Me too. Thanks uh, a bunch, guys. That was Dr. Nicholas Holland, who was in charge of the pep band and really involved there the whole time. And it was, it was great getting to chat with him. Like, uh, like I said at the start, learned a couple things myself. Uh, and yeah, Dr. Holland, it's always fun being there at those basketball games, uh, you know, I got to work with him during some of the women's games and uh, it's, you know, what they do, the, the band is really such an important part of the athletic experience and the game day experience that I don't think, you know, a lot of people kind of take for granted. I would just like to clarify um, a comment I made in the interview. I did play trumpet. Um, it was in elementary school and it was for about three weeks. Uh, and then uh, the teacher that I had went on maternity leave. I did not like the new teacher. And I said, nah, I'm over it. But uh, there's an alternate universe where I might be in the CSU marching band. Maybe not at this age, at this time and this year. So I'm kind of old. But, you know. Roll it say it's, probably good, it's probably a good thing that I didn't recommend we get you get a trumpet in your hands and get you back out there this, uh, this fall. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I, I'd just be like, uh, that's about it. You're just pretending, pretending to play it and, you know, just move yeah. fingers. Exactly. Like I was in the chorus. I'll, 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 I'll hit the... Uh, I'll hit the chorus and then I'll just mumble along with the rest for so the notes. I know I'll go and then I'll just pretend to do the rest. It's okay. I'd be pretending the whole time. So you got me, you got a one up on there, there. <laughs> but either way, before we get on to Mr. John Peters, our good friend and colleague, uh, we've got to remember East Bay Deli special. Thanks to them for helping us put this together each week. Now let's get over to John Peters. Welcome in our second guest for this week. It is a, a real special guest, one that we have not seen in far too long. It is uh, one of my partners in crime on the broadcast booth and, you know, one of the, one of the best guys around. John Peters, welcome in. It's been so long. I feel like, like I said, it's been way too long. We haven't seen you. It's amazing. Uh, it's what, been four months or so, I guess. Uh, but uh, this is an exciting day. I also think of our friend Larry Sienko. You know why the Yankees start playing baseball tonight. And so, uh, yeah, it's been too long. And uh, April, I don't know about you guys, but the month of April seemed like it went like four months, you know, just that one month, the first month of being shut down. Since then, I think time has gone a little quicker. But, uh, wow, I miss you guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's really good to see you, John. I'm used to seeing you through May and then possibly a stop for a week in the summer and so to not have any time with you. It's, uh, it's been weird, and it's good to see you pop up on Twitter occasionally, and it's good to uh, text you occasionally. And you gave me a call. Sorry, I was in the middle of something, so I didn't pick up, but it was good to get a, get a voice, nice voicemail from you too. You know, it's, it's been good to hear from you, but it's been great to see you, well, it's good to see you guys, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm glad, uh, and hopefully, you know, hoping and praying that uh, we'll be back at it pretty soon. Uh, sports, as we know, you know, I work in the church, too, but sports and church are two of the things that all, all of a sudden just went down, you know. So um, it's been interesting doing all of our church work online. Uh, it's been interesting in the sports world. I have actually gone to different fan you know become a fan of different sports 
like for instance, Korean baseball or uh, horse racing. You know what? I'd never cared about horses, but all of a sudden that was one of the few things that was going on. So um, I know what it's like uh, to search, trying to find those sports out there. And I've been watching Killian. You like I've I've been trying to listen closely to what the announcers say and maybe learn a little bit as I mm -hmm. as I go along. My friend Jeff McGarrier was doing a great job on cornhole, one of the few active sports there early on as well. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it's funny, you know. And I look back, uh, you guys, uh, Nick, you and I are also partners in crime, and we worked around the actually around the country together. But uh, realized that I started back in 2010, and I, the only coach, the only person I know who's still at CSU. I believe is Barkley Radebaugh. Coach Radebaugh is still there, but everybody else has kind of come and gone. And, uh, but it's so, and no, you guys, you don't realize, and Killian probably does, but Nick has, has come in and added so many neat things with our broadcasts that when we've started out, it was like a headphone and one little jack, you know, and say, hey, the volleyball match is starting in 10 minutes and you, you go in 10 minutes, that's it. And that's all I had, you know, and now we have so much. And Nick, uh, obviously, you guys have done great work. Um, and Killy and I, I guess we're the benefit. We, we benefit from it. And uh, so I like the little sneeze button particularly, you know, so we can cough without taking the headphones off and holding them off to the side <laughs> and coughing. So uh, a lot of neat little things that we've added on at CSU. Yeah, I, I didn't realize it until – Part of the things I was doing during shutdown was that Flashback Friday, where like, every Friday we would air an archived game from the past, and we were going back to 2012 and seeing where it started and where it is now. And it's like, oh, wow, we've really come a long way. And it's, it's really neat to see the various iterations from Zeke to Jeremy to myself and, and see how each person grew it their own way. It's, it's so neat, too. I, I remember very well the very first time we had the talk back from the producer to the broadcaster, and I, I don't remember who I was working with. I think it was our friend who's now in Minnesota, Jonathan. Oh, yeah. Jonathan Messenger, He was, we were doing a women's basketball game, and I said something to the effect of, we got the rebound. And I heard a voice say, don't say we. <laughs> I looked at Jonathan thinking it was him, <laughs> and I said, yes, we got the rebound. And it was one of those moments where I went all of a sudden, wait a minute. And we're now hearing from our producer or whoever's in the uh, trailer uh, talking back to us. So, Killian, I don't know. You probably have had someone talking back the whole time, you know. But myself, I was like, for so many years, there was no – it was just silence. And all of a sudden, now we had the ability. And Nick always throws in some great comments throughout the games. Of course, we know that. It definitely, it definitely is interesting. It's, it's definitely different the first time you hear somebody actually talking back to you. That's it's not your own voice or your partner's voice when you're there at the uh, you're there at the table. But uh, and for those I mean, that don't know, it's literally just like a little whisper in your ear. Yeah. You're you're going, you're going, you're going, and in the as you're going here, actually that's wrong. Or oh, this person's up next. Or long run in the first, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. It, there is that split second of who is in my ear right now before you realize what it is and how they're helping you or I guess, you know, hurting you depending on which way you take it. I mean, some of it's making fun. I mean, I know well, the nice, the, the fun thing about our truck is uh, you guys, we always keep it. We always try to keep it lively and keep it fun. And I mean, if, if we make, if we make some sort of silly mistake or say something silly, we'll definitely hear about it uh, through the talk back. Yeah. And, and the thing about the uh, Nick has such a great sense of humor that sometimes uh, if something funny comes along. It's hard to keep that, you're talking in the middle of a play or middle of some conversation about the match or game. And now you want to laugh or comment about what Nick has said as a, as a, a good humor under <laughs> underneath the radar. So, uh, but it's always fun. I think Nick and I have actually done a couple of baseball games together. So that was, that was kind of a, a neat thing to do as well. And uh, boy, I miss, we missed almost the, all of baseball season and softball too, you know? So, uh, just miss seeing those guys and those ladies out there. We're about five minutes into this, and we've talked a lot about me. So let's keep that going. No, no, okay. no. Let's let's turn to John. We've already done an episode for Killian and I. Uh, yeah. You're you're a man of many hats. You you really are. Uh, 
how have you been active? Like, what have you been able to keep doing uh, during this great shutdown? Yes, uh, our, I mentioned the church. You know, I'm a, I'm a youth pastor. I, I tell folks I'm the world's oldest youth minister, although a couple folks have passed me by uh, over the years. But I have, believe it or not, Nick, it's, it's been amazing because a lot of people come to Charleston to, believe it or not, to get married. And as a pastor, uh, a few years back, I put my name in a, a list of folks that would be available if folks were coming into Charleston, didn't have a pastor, and they needed someone to help them out. So you wouldn't believe how many times, I probably have done 20 or 30 different small weddings over the last few months. I mean, it'd be just like a bride and a groom, myself and a photographer. And so I've, I've had that happening a lot. Um, we've also, I've, I've had, uh, just did a wedding last Saturday with, a, a, another gentleman. The guy was a pas- basketball player at the university of Tennessee, six foot nine, a dentist. And that kind of hit me funny. You know, I, I can't imagine looking up and seeing a dentist who's six foot nine, but, uh, so I've met a lot of people, you know, I love meeting people and, and, and that makes it easy as well. Uh, got a family coming in this coming weekend from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, doing a 10-year vow renewal out at Isle of Palms. So I've been all over the place doing some of that. Um, also doing, uh, I've actually done some umpiring. We, uh, the city of Hanahan has still had their fast pitch softball going. So I've done a little bit of umpiring. Um, I went out and knew, I knew, man, I had to exercise because umpiring and refereeing is not going to happen much. So I went out and bought a bike. You've probably seen this on Facebook. I went to a pawn shop. I mean, I went to Walmart or somewhere and they were like three or $400. They only had one or two left. So I said, you know what? I'm going to find a bike. I've got to have a bike I can ride around. So I went to a pawn shop, never been in a pawn shop much, found one for a hundred dollars. And I said, I want that one. They said, you want to test it out? And I said, nope, I'm just, I want that one right there. Lady came back and said, Hey, it's, it's more then what the, no, it's, she said, it's not the same price. I said, oh man, it's going to be two or $300. She said, no, it's actually $90. It was less. Took it home. My wife looked at it and she said, you know, you just bought a women's bike, a woman's bike. And I said, I don't care, man. So uh, I said, I've been riding a woman's bike around James Island, uh, out towards Fort Sump, you know, out on the, on the Harbor and all over the place, trying to keep some sort of action going and activity. But uh, that's been fun, taking some photos and posting those. Um, but church-wise, we've, everything's been online. Uh, we've still not opened up our church services because we meet in a school. So still doing online uh, worship, online youth meetings. And so I don't know if that covered everything that I do. Nick, I, don't, I do a lot of other things too, but uh, I guess one of my favorites when I talk to people is I get to work at Charleston Southern and part of the sports broadcasting team. And I guess that's one of the things I'm, I'm most proud of, as well as being a youth pastor, of course. So going back, uh, you know, I know I've, I'm still relatively new and you were, the, uh, you were the first person I got the chance to work with. But kind of take us back. What, what got you started in, in broadcasting? You know, how did you get into it and how has it evolved to where you are today? Well, I was sitting in a drive through bank, uh, the banking drive through for South Carolina Federal Credit Union about this time of the summer in 2010. And I got a phone call from Dr. Rick Brewer. Rick was the uh, vice president at the time and said, uh, he and I had worked together in church. And he said, uh, John, you like sports and you like to talk, which you know, I've already demonstrated that here, I'm sure. And he said, we need someone to come in and help with our sports broadcast. At that time, and Nick, you, you can correct this if I'm wrong. I think the Big South at that time went out and told every school they were going to get a TriCaster and they would be mandated to start broadcasting uh, all sports, you know, several sports. Anyway, they had a certain number they had to do. And so all of a sudden, you needed someone to do the audio for like volleyball and soccer and so forth. So here it was, you know, all of a sudden, like I said, I had never done a broadcast until 2010 when I came in and they set the microphone in front of me, the headset and said, volleyball, the match will be starting in 10 minutes. Good luck. 
And of course we had no replays, no, you know, I think killing you like this. I think I read through in the entire roster of both teams, where they were from, how tall they were, <laughs> what was, cause I didn't know what, you know, didn't know what else to say at that time. We didn't have these sports information sheets like we have now uh, that Seth Montgomery and Derek and, all those folks handing out, they put together a big packet of information for us. But at that time, we didn't have any of that, you know. So in live stats, you know, what was that? Now, uh, we, we sound pretty smart just because we're able to read a computer screen that says so-and-so has shot seven of ten from the field in basketball or they have ten kills and we're only in the second set. So we sound really smart, but a lot of it's we're just reading the live stats that are coming across. Is it okay if I say that, Killing? I mean, those are, I feel those like are secrets out there. Right? I was going to say, it's like, a magician, it's like a magician giving away the secret of the trick. But, I mean, no, I mean, you're not wrong. It definitely, uh, I mean, without all those people running those stats and everything, we, we look, we're absolutely clueless. They're the heroes behind the scenes. That's right. Uh, the folks, and, and those who come to the ball games, uh, matches or whatever, if you see all those people down there on that score table, every one of them has a role that is vital to, to putting forth a good, uh, not only live action, but the video action that people are watching and the live stats that are going out. Of course, you've got Nick and his group. They're behind the scenes. You know, they're back there putting the graphics on and uh, checking the replays. It's amazing, you know, now that, that – we have referees who come to us and come to Nick and say, we need to see if the foot of that player touched the line when they shot that three pointer. And most of the time, Nick and his camera crew will have that exact picture for them in just a few seconds. How amazing is that? You know? Yeah. When it all started, it was a, uh, it was a TriCaster in like a briefcase basically, and maybe a replay thing. And, it's grown to a trailer full of full of people and um and it's yeah it's neat to think about how far it's come and uh where it can go from there and you know 10 years ago you didn't have you know stats monitors and now you've got ipads that you know barely the size of a phone that you can just tote out there and you can pull up these stats and like you said it makes everyone seem a lot smarter i know i lean on that when the rare times i have to call a game a lot yeah well and you know the I guess the thing that I'm known for are the corny jokes that I try to throw I, in. No, I don't, I don't know what you're talking I'd never say that. Like, I, I brought some photos for you guys, uh, oh. folks, out there, of oh. some of the neat places that I've visited during the quarantine, if you want to see those. There's a few. Uh, I've got more here. So, Beautiful. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, we've been taking those long, romantic walks to the refrigerator. And uh, so it's been, it's been a challenge. I, I will say this, and you guys know I've said some really uh, dumb things over the years, <laughs> but I was here in Kentucky. I was at Lexington in Rupp Arena. Now think about this. My nephew is getting ready to play uh, an exhibition game here, and I'm coming in, 22,000 people in Rupp Arena, and my sister-in-law is on the phone with me, and I'm trying to, we're trying to locate each other. Now here's one of the dumbest things I've ever said. You ready for this? I said, I'm the one in the blue shirt. Now, at Kentucky Rupp Arena, there's only about 21,090 people in blue shirts. So I have fun, and, and you guys know this. If, if something hits me, I usually try to make a joke about it, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I hear Nick in the headphone going, oh, no, John, you shouldn't have. So I, uh, I'm not, I don't hesitate to hit on, go talk back and just go, oh. Oh, John. Yeah, that voice of, oh, John. <laughs> yeah, that that's one of the one of the best. So, uh, but we have fun, and uh, you know, like I said, it's it's one of the neat things. If you love sports, what's better than being able to sit right next to the coach, and and being able to watch everything that's going on? The referees are, are kind of letting you know what's happening. You hear the coach arguing sometimes with the ref. I've been, I've sat there before, and Killian, maybe you've done this too. Being a referee myself. I've started listening to what the coach was saying to the ref, and then I think, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be talking on the broadcast, but I'm trying to hear what's being said, uh, say from Coach Radebaugh, Coach Applin, whoever it is. And it, it, there's nothing much better than sports than being right there, right a part of what's going on. 
and I absolutely love it. You can tell that. Yeah, well, we definitely we've got we got one of the best seats in the house. It's a uh, it's a really special one, and it, it is it is fun. It's fun getting to listen to to everything and hearing it all down there. But uh, I know one thing, one thing I feel like I have to bring up and we have to talk about is uh, I know you're a, you're a foodie. Uh, you enjoy yourself some good food. So I know things have been I know things have been shut down and, and it's been tough. But are there any are there any places that we need to go try out? Anything good that you've had recently? Well, let's see. Uh... You know, one of those things I just ate at uh, my dad and I went over to Cracker Barrel and they had this chicken cheddar, uh, let's see, what did they call it? Chicken broccoli and cheddar uh, special on Tuesdays. Uh, so if you get a chance, I mean, it was phenomenal. My wife makes this a very similar thing. So I was telling her about it, but uh, that was one that I came across uh, just yesterday. My dad and I are very similar in that way. Um, every time he eats a meal, he says, this is the best meal I've ever eaten. Every time we get to a stoplight, he says, this is the longest light on the, in the history. You know, so we're very similar in that way. But you're right. We got to go to, uh, what was it, Olive Garden? Yeah. And uh, enjoy the, uh, the cuisine there. But uh, I, I love about any food. You know that. So uh, I did not. I didn't really catch, uh, you know, if, if Nick had made two sandwiches right a while ago, I don't know if I could have gotten over there, but I think I would have even enjoyed sitting down with Nick having that five minute sandwich that you fixed on the bagel. That would have been nice. You know, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you, you would have been pretty close uh, knowing you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Seth treats us pretty well back there in the uh, sports information area. Usually there's some good food set aside. I guess my favorite are those chicken tenders. Uh, I'm trying to remember where do we get those uh, chicken tenders from. That's uh, it's not Moe's, is it? That's that's the uh, one of the Chipotle type thing. Um, mm -hmm. Where do we get those? That, I'm yeah, trying to remember. We get raisin canes and we get raisin canes. That's the one. We yes. Get, um, churches, I believe. Yes, all those. I mean, it, we get treated very well. I will say that. So Moe's, Papa John's, uh, Chick Fil A. Oh. You know, yeah, we, the, I've I keep going back to this in shows, but this is earned from, from a lot of work as well. So. It's fun. It's fun. Well, we, uh, yeah, I'm just hoping and praying. I, I love, I've enjoyed watching the coaches and hearing what they've had to say. Um, and you guys are doing a good job of, of sharing that. My thing is I'm not on campus. You know, I, I, the only days that I'm usually around school is on game day. So a lot of times I come in maybe at the end of the summer and I find out, who's still there, who's not there. I'm just not around to see all the ins and outs and the uh, inside baseball type of thing that goes on. In a, in a way, that's kind of a blessing, but it's also it's good to be with you guys and to kind of catch up a little bit, find out what's going on. And, uh, man, looking forward to getting back over. I don't know when it's going to happen, but uh, hopefully soon. Well, I can tell you everybody's still there. Um, we might have an old face returning. Uh, it's likely, but TBD. I'll tell you more about that later. But uh, everyone's still there, and we all miss it. And we all miss – we miss it, man. We miss normal. We miss regularity. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's a, and another thing is, too, we, we don't want to take for granted the things. I think when you do something regularly over a period of time, you start taking things for granted. Maybe the people around you. Uh, maybe the, um, the excitement of sports, for instance. And all of a sudden, when we don't have it, uh, we just look back and say, man, I don't want to take that for granted. Uh, from this day forward, I want to just say, hey, cherish those moments that you have when you can broadcast a baseball game or a softball game, volleyball match. Because it may not have, you know, we may not have that forever, but we, we, uh, we have a great privilege in doing it. It was really nice for me to be able to unplug and relax for a while. And I never didn't appreciate what I was doing because I know I was very lucky. but. It, it makes it a lot easier to, when we get back to it, go back to that mindset of how lucky I am to do this. Yeah, I, I think one of the hardest things, and Killian, you might relate to this, and, and, and I know Nick will, one of the hardest things that, that happened over the years for me was when we went from uh, Big South Network to ESPN Plus because all of a sudden we had to try to be unbiased. <laughs> and my problem is, I can't be on, I mean, 
when I'm talking about the Buccaneers, you know, that's my team. And it's very hard for me to try to be unbiased. And I don't think I can do that. I, I, I try, Nick, you know, I've tried to do that, but I get excited, you know, and there, I just don't know that there's any way around that. I think the fans understand it, of course, but uh, it's one of those things where that was a, that was a challenge when we kind of came along and said, Hey, we've got to really give the other team that's come in just as much um, push and, and, and kudos as we give the Buccaneer teams, but it's hard because we know the Buccaneer teams much, much better. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, look, hopefully we're, uh, we're hopefully a little over a month and a half out from, uh, from things getting back underway. I think we got some, uh, I think, I think we've got some soccer and some volleyball coming up in, in September. Uh, I know they're still trying to get get those dates finalized on when everything can go on again, but uh, it's it's almost back. Well, that's that that will be exciting. I've uh, and here's something too, Nick. The, over the ten year period that I've done is I run in every once in a while. I'll run into a coach or someone. I've done some uh, refereeing of volleyball down at MUSC, and I'll run into a name that sounds familiar. And then I, I find out later it's somebody who played volleyball at Presbyterian or someone who is related to someone at USC Upstate. And those names that we've worked on to try to pronounce correctly, all of a sudden they pop back in our head and I go, are you related to somebody that played at USC Upstate or Presbyterian or Winthrop? And all of a sudden there's a connection. So over the years, it's amazing how many people you run into that somehow, somewhere along the line, your paths have crossed. Well, I mean, it's been great catching up with you. Uh, I mean, like I said, we should be hopefully getting back, for, be getting back towards it again soon. Can't wait to uh, to get back in a, a socially distant booth with you, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, we can see each other real soon. And get back going. That's right, and I think I still owe Nick a uh, crab house dinner or lunch or something is that right i wasn't gonna bring it up but yeah you promised it and then um everything shut down so i it is not lost on me i've not forgotten it's uh it's back here uh it'll, well, my, it'll happen at some point well my friend we will do that uh you know the neat thing about owing someone dinner or lunch is that i get to eat with you so uh, <laughs> a lot sure. of fun a lot sure. of fun as always john the time we have together goes far too quick you know, it was good to see you Good to see you guys. Uh, hey, go Bucks, and we'll see you soon. That was John Peters, our work friend, our great friend, colleague, and uh, also one of the broadcast guys, uh, one of the play-by-play -play guys for us here at CSU. Always fun getting to check up with John, and uh, you know, it's talking to John's always fun. He's always got, he's always up to something. He's always been doing something, and uh, it's fun to see how he's been staying busy. I have literally been across the country with that man, and. Uh, there is not a single stop that has not that has been boring, um, uh, largely because of him. And he can kill some Texas barbecue. I can tell you that firsthand. Yeah, he's John. John's definitely a foodie. Uh, we we didn't get into the uh, the Olive Garden pasta pass, which uh, you know we'll save that one. We'll save that one for when we actually get back on the air. But uh, no, yeah, it was it was great catching up with John, and uh, it was another another good week, I'd say. We haven't had a bad one. And we're going to try to keep that going next week. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're getting closer. Uh, you know, we've got, we've got some things in the works for all of you. We're going to keep going uh, as soon as we're able to get back on campus and hopefully get back in person here soon and, uh, you know, mix the show up just a little bit and make it a little more fun for you. Yeah, when he says there are things in the works, I feel like we've said it before, but it's true. We're working on some things. And the uh, show is going to continue. It'll take a different look but it will still exist once we're all back on campus and safe. Once we are closer to that, we can talk more about it but, uh, and introduce some things. But uh, in the meantime, we'll be coming at you every week. Until then, on Buccaneer Insider, brought to you by East Bay Deli. Exactly. Look at that. Who needs me? Who needs me? I wonder that often. All righty. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you. see you again next time on Buccaneer Insider.